Howdy, my name is Pete England, and I'm the Engineering Communication Instructor for the Zachary Department of Civil Engineering. This video is a quick list of tips for writing an engineering lab report. Uh, this video only covers one method for writing a lab report. Naturally, there are others, uh, but I think this method will help engineering students get started quickly. Then, after you practice some, you can come up with your own method. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to use questions. Uh, you can see I've got a pretty standard lab report outline here. Introduction, methods, results, discussion, and conclusion. What we're going to do is um, invent a series of questions that goes under each one of those headings to get us started writing so that we can then uh, fill out the rest of the lab report. In other words, instead of sitting around wondering what goes in the intro introduction, we'll come up with a series of questions that help us fill it out. Uh, before I get started, um, I want to talk about something that uh, people ask me about all the time. Uh, I frequently get asked about narrative voice uh, in lab reports. In other words, first person, third person, second person, etc. Narrative voice is <coughs> excuse me, a serious issue uh, in lab reports. Scientists and engineers frequently eliminate all references to themselves in lab reports, but it's a practice that varies from company to company and agency to agency. Most of the professional lab reports I've seen were written without using I, we, you, your, they, or them. In other words, most of the lab reports I've seen are written largely without pronouns. Uh, of course, the best policy is to look at old lab reports or uh, to talk to your uh, boss or your instructor. Um, if you're still struggling to get the, uh, the lab report written, just remember that narrative point of view is, is way less important than just getting the, the, the lab report written. Besides, you can always go back and make any changes that you need to make. Okay, so let's talk about the introduction. Uh, the purpose of your introduction is to bring a fellow engineer up to speed as quickly as possible. So the first question you answer is, what did you do? Well, you performed an experiment to produce some facts. How was that exper experiment performed and what's important about it? Go through and answer these, these questions one at a time and be as direct and blunt as possible. So we'll start with, what did you do? Why did you do it? Uh, in other words, what's the purpose of the test? How did you test it? Uh, this can be quick. It can be one sentence. Uh, did you use a conventional oven or a microwave? Did you use linear wave theory or something else? Uh, the next question that you answer is, why did you test it that way? Uh, again, you're being as brief as possible. Chances are that most of the lab reports you write in college can be introduced in one, maybe even just two paragraphs. So, for the methods section, we're going to start off nice and easy. Uh, what equipment did you use? Uh, here's a tip. Uh, you may just want to list your equipment in a bulleted or a numbered list. The next question that you answer is, what did you do? So you provide an order of events for the lab experiment. The order of events should be more than just a bulleted list, though it should be as simple and direct as possible. Be sure to include any variations or events that may have impacted your data. Uh, here's a tip. Uh, I strongly encourage you to take notes during the lab experiment. If you have a handout telling you what to do, use that for taking notes. Or use your camera phone to take pictures to remind you of what you were doing and when you were doing it. When you're done, sit down and write it up at your earliest convenience. Uh, one of the most common problems when writing lab reports is that people forget what they did and therefore uh, their method section is actually an inaccurate version of events. Uh, here's another tip. It's pretty standard to use passive voice in the methods section. Uh, passive voice means putting the focus on the action rather than who performs the action. So instead of, I heated the sample, you would write, the sample was heated. So for the results section, you start with the question, what did you find? Uh, what relevant data did you produce? Um, you'll want to ask your instructor to be sure, but chances are you can probably present a great deal of this data uh, using tables and charts. Uh, if so, be sure to label your tables and charts. In the discussion section, you start with the question, what is the most important data in the results and why is that data important? Are there any limits to your data? What do we now know and what do we not know based on your results? So remember, the purpose of the discussion section is to tell the reader what's important about the results. Uh, since facts don't actually speak for themselves, you'll have to speak for the facts. A good tip for writing the discussion section is to think about trying to explain the experimental results to an, uh, an engineering friend whose area of expertise is nonetheless different from yours. Your friend is a knowledgeable engineer but isn't familiar with the concepts of what you've done and why they're important, so you explain your results to her. 
for the conclusion, you start with the question, what's the next step? Is more experimentation required? How can all this information be used? The purpose of the conclusion is to let the reader know what comes next or what can be done now that you've completed the experiment and analyzed the results. So remember, a conclusion is a lot like a sum. It's more than one thing added together. If you find yourself repeating results without providing some insight into how they can be applied to a real world solution, then just think about your engineering friend who's an expert, just not your kind of expert. Uh, she wants to know what you can do with all this information, so explain it to her. Uh, as usual, if you have any questions and comments, uh, contact me at peter.england at tamu.edu. Thanks and gig'em.